Good morning. Uh, I wanted to do a quick tutorial today to talk about some of the ways that I've optimized my sequence editor workflow. Um, I'll start by asking a question. Have you ever noticed how uh, when you are in the main tracks arrange window and you open a MIDI track in the MIDI editor um, and then you close, you can click on a different one and open that and you still you will only see this one or if I want to click on this one and open this you only see this etc etc MIDI editor intelligently knows okay I'm selecting something in this window that's what I want to see in the MIDI editor sequence editor is very different than that it it likes to compound each selection and remembers what was previously visible in the window before that um, so if I open this track in the sequence editor uh, you'll see that these other tracks were there. So like if I close and just, I just want to view this one, for example. So if I close it and then I go and I open this one down here, you'll see it now still shows me that one from before and this one. And every time I open a new one, it adds to it. Um, some people may like this. I, I find it gets cumbersome. I like thinking about it just like the MIDI editor, like whatever I'm going to select here and I open in sequence editor, that's what I want to jump to. That's what I want to see. And I, and, and I don't really need personally to have the sequence editor get continually larger and larger and bogged down with all the tracks I've historically opened. Um, and then the second thing is you'll notice that uh, sequence editor often it remembers the lengths of each thing um, and if I open a new one it, it maintains all those lengths um, and, and it can get very kind of incongruous between some tracks are larger some tracks are shorter now you can hold option down as you click and rearrange and it'll automatically move them all to the same length but uh, I started looking and thinking about, is there a way that I can um, kind of reset my lengths or even have it open to a given length at any time? Um, and this is where we're going to, uh, I found a couple solutions that I think uh, some people may find very helpful. And this is where we're going to turn to uh, our trusty friend, Keyboard Maestro, to get the job done. So um, the first thing we're going to do is, if you recall me mentioning that the great thing about Keyboard Maestro is it takes over any key command that uh, DP normally would do when you assign it. What I mean by that is, is my key command for opening the sequence editor is, is Shift S. That's the default for DP. Um, but what I want to do is uh, kind of create my own version of Shift S that is going to do a whole bunch of other things besides just hitting shift s so uh we're gonna go into keyboard maestro and if you haven't already i would create a new macro group um i've done that here just as sequence editor tutorial and we're going to create a new macro and i'm going to call it uh open uh sequence editor um, by the way when you're looking at the macro group level i like to make sure it's available in only digital performer that way if i hit um shift s somewhere else if i'm just typing something it won't trigger uh, this macro uh, mistakenly so now that i've got this open sequence editor i'm going to make the trigger shift s so what i'm used to and and whatnot but now that we've created this shift s won't actually do anything in dp yet because um because keyboard maestro has taken it over and we haven't given it any steps to do so the first thing we're going to do is this same old same old um uh, 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 macro uh, or, or shift s command so uh, we're going to do that with a type keystroke and just hit shift s so now the same exact thing will happen as it always has but i want to do some uh important things first um dp has a nice command for uh show only selected and for me, I've set that up as command option S. You can set that up as whatever you want. But we're going to add that into our chain here. So command option S. And now what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of this problem where the sequence editor is always compounding or adding each new track that we've opened inside of it. Um, and so it'll behave more like the MIDI editor. So when we're in this window and we open something with Shift S, it's only going to 
ever show us whatever we had selected. Um, some people may like the default way of DP working. I find this is more focused and direct. Anytime I'm in this window, whatever I'm selecting, that's what I'm going to see. Nothing else in Sequence Editor. Uh, but as you can see, we still have this issue where tracks are still kind of not right exactly the same size based on how they were being viewed before. And really, we want a fast way to make everything a specific size. Um, and luckily, there is a way to do that in, in Keyboard Maestro as well. Uh, I'm going to start by showing that as a separate command, but we can integrate them together uh, pretty easily for anyone that wants to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new command, and I'm going to call it uh, resize to zoom times four. Um, or I'll call it sequence editor resize to zoom times four. Uh, in my own template, I use command option down arrow for this. And um, we're going to have this operation do two things in succession. The first is in the DP commands, we want to search for this thing that says zoom all the way in, all the way out vertically. So uh, this is also set to command option down arrow. Um, and if you, uh, let's disable this macro for a second so we can see how it natively behaves when you set that and use it in, um, in Digital Performer. So if we're viewing a bunch of tracks and they're all a different size, some of them are bigger, some of them are, are smaller. Um, if I engage this command, command option down arrow, watch what happens. They all reset to this minimum teeny little size. Um, and that's useful because whatever length they may have been before, now they're all going to be exactly the same length and they're all going to be the smallest size possible. So we're going to add that operation here, type a keystroke. And then um, you may have been able to guess where this is going. We're going to type another keystroke that is zoom in, which is simply command up arrow. And we're going to have it do it four times. And we're just going to duplicate it four times. Now you can do this however you want. You can do it to taste. You can do it three times. You can do it five times. However wide you feel like you like looking at it. Um, but now if uh, we we enable this macro so Keyboard Maestro takes it over and does what we want, um, watch what happens. It's going to, in succession, zoom everything all the way out and then zoom in four times in a row. Um, and just to sort of extra prove it, we're gonna we're gonna make these different lengths. You'll see some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. It's so annoying how they're different lengths. I wish there was a quick key command to reset everything to exactly one length that I want uh, uniformly. Uh, here we go. And now Keyboard Maestro took it over and very quickly reset everything the same length. If I think, you know, I want the default to be a little bit wider, uh, you can make it um, six. And so now, quick key command, and now everything is automatically the same exact width, and uh, and it's going to be six zoomed. Or if you decide, you know, I actually want everything to be a little bit narrower by default, I'm going to only make it two. And now we have the narrow view where they're all reset uniformly and they're all two uh, zooms wide. Um, so very very useful for resetting the heights of everything. Now. Uh, if we want, um, let's make it a little bit wider. We'll make it. We'll make, bring it back to four. So we got four zoom uh, operations. But if we want, what we could do is actually combine. So I'm going to copy these uh, macros into the Open Sequence Editor command. And I'm going to disable this. And now what's going to happen is it's going to do it all in one fell swoop. It's going to anytime I open anything it's going to open only those selected tracks. It's going to open it into Sequence Editor, and it's going to um, zoom all the way out to reset the widths and then make everything uniformly wide. Um, and you can see how useful that is. 
Someone earlier asked about um, if there was a way to get DP to edit in sequence editor uh, MIDI instead of in MIDI editor. Um, there actually is, if you go to preferences and you go to edit windows, you can make the, for MIDI tracks, the default edit window, you can switch this from MIDI editor to sequence editor. And now when you double click, uh, it will open the sequence editor. Um, one thing to keep in mind though, is that double clicking won't engage this macro uh, chain. So uh, if I was going to work this way, I would just get used to rather than double clicking my shift S key command. Um, and that will make sure that anything I open in sequence editor with shift S will always reset to exactly the same size. And it'll always open only what I've selected. Um, now you can also do it you know, you can pick and choose which part of the macros you want. It, it, you know, you could simply get rid of the um, command option down arrow, which is the show only selected tracks. Um, oh, excuse me, that's in this one. Excuse me. So command option S, apologies. So open sequence editor, you can get rid of this, or we could just disable it for now. And it will do the resetting operation, uh, but it will still add... Um, the tracks, the newer tracks to the operation. So it'll continually get bigger as we open new tracks. If you like seeing all the tracks that you've historically opened. Um, so anyways, uh, just that's, those are my tips about uh, how to maximize your sequence editor workflow. Um, I hope that's been helpful and uh, hope you have a good day.